He was then brought into an encounter with God where God said, I will no longer call you Abraham. I will call you Abraham. And that way he was brought up higher. Became same level with you. <laughs> with the person blessing him. Okay, let me bring him down. And, and look at this. Look at look at the name play. Uh, the color the, the color is uh, is just to emphasize. The name Abram is actually uh, exalted father. Abba, Abba, exalted father. That's a uh, a left bed and then rush and then uh, men. But then when it changed to Abraham, <coughs> you would see this. <coughs> I'm sorry. That is a hey. It's spelled H E Y or H E I. The fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Fifth meaning grace. The meaning of this is the, uh, the supernatural power of God to create. It is also, the meaning of this is also loving kindness of God. This is where you don't participate, you just go ahead and does it. He added this to the name of Abraham to become Abraham. Father of nation, and even the wife who does not have it had that pain placed after that the uh, after the rain that the uh, the yard was changed to hay. That means the word was grace. It is the grace of God that brought us here, that brought us to the elevated portion of being a priest of God. And what happens when you operate under the Melchizedek like, priesthood? This is what the Bible said. A kingly priest. He ministers in the heavenly tabernacle, not earthbound. He operates in the heavenly authority and brings it down to the earth. And the priest is in the order of Melchizedek. In the order of Melchizedek will be treated differently by angels and humans. God deals with you differently. Your service is not on this temple on the earth, and even the heavenly beings deal with you differently. <coughs> and uh, look at this, uh, <coughs> look at this, uh, it, let me just emphasize number three. Acts 19. <coughs> I'm sorry. Do I have a fire department water here? I'm about to end, please. No, no bathroom break for me. And what do I mean that whenever a person operates in the kingly priest? Anointing, <clears throat> you, you act on it. Let me let me give you this. Some Jews went around driving out evil spirits, trying to invoke the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus, over those who are demon possessed. It's a story in the book of Acts. They would say, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Now, seven sons of Siva, a Jewish high priest, was doing this. They saw that whenever Paul would go around saying, In the name of Jesus, demons come out, the demons would just go away. So, like what happened yesterday. And so there, were, there was this high priest by the name of Siva. He has seven children. Seven children has father Abraham. Seven children. They said, oh, I like that. Let's go around doing that. They did go around invoking the name of their father. They went around invoking the name of Jesus, whom, Je whom Paul preaches. And so for some reason, the problem the chief demons were going out. And then in verse 14, the seven sons of Siva, Jewish high priest, were doing this. 15, one day, say one day. One day. The evil spirit answered them. Jesus, I know. Paul I know about. Well, who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overburdened them all and gave them such a beating that they run out of the house naked and bleeding. How is it that the people who actually belong to the uh, Levites, the Kohanim, under Aaron's lineage cannot overcome the demons? And here's somebody who's not a Levite. Paul, I believe it's a Benjamite. Over here, without any access to the lineage of the high priest of Aaron, what's just getting rid of demons? Because it is a new covenant. It's a covenant of power. And that's what happened. When it did, when this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear. And the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believe now came and openly confessed what they had done. You know, it's it's, it's helpful for confession. We had a lot of that yesterday. That's why there's a lot of deliverance. A number who had practiced sorcery brought the scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drops. Seven sons of Siva. 
not part of the covenant, acting as though they know what they're doing. They get a beating, they run naked and bleeding. This is how the demons have to recognize you. They see you with an authority because when they look in the heaven, they, they see you seated next to Jesus. And they'll say, I really hope he doesn't know he's seated next to Jesus. Have you ever been in a bus, in a subway, or standing in a, uh, in a place whereby a famous person is actually standing next to you or walking next to you like, like me? <laughs> Let's pray together. You're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, what happens, you feel like, oh, there's a royalty. I remember when we were in, in Jerusalem, there was some uh, 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 a foreign president or something that came out, and, and one of our company has a camera, and he started taking a picture. And he said, look, I saw him in my picture. I said, wow, you're almost like a, a, a paparazzi. Yeah, yeah. Your designation is pepperoni. Because you still have like ten more to become a paper, paparazzi. You know, we, we feel we feel like we feel important. We we catch something important, or we are next to somebody important. Kaya malawi gusto maging alala yung artista because they felt like artista like that. Uh, but God is God is saying you are actually a part of my crew. You are elevated and blessed, and you are right here with me. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, so you go. He's not saying, I'm going to give you a piece of this, and then go. Remember when Jesus said, children, the Father is, is happy to give you the whole kingdom. Look it up in the Bible. This is a half. When John the Baptist was beheaded, one of the questions for, uh, for, for the uh, daughter of uh, Herodias was, what would you like to ask me? I will give you up to half of my kingdom. But God is saying, now I'm giving you all my kingdom. See how generous God is? And so when he sits us over there, he's saying, the same authority I had, you go ahead and do it. In fact, the Bible said, you will do more than that. To bring the manifesting, manifestation of the nine gifts so that people will know. And I could point to you that you want to know how good I am. Look, look at what they did. There's another example in the Bible where, oh, let me just deal with the angels. Did you know that angels, the Bible, this is what the Bible says about angels. I, I know you like this. Hebrews 1 verse 14, in the Eternal Standard Version. Angels, all of them are spirits on a divine mission. Sounds important, isn't it? We have a divine mission. What is our divine mission? To serve. What is that? What is a divine mission? To serve, to serve, to those who, to serve those who are about to enact salvation. Angels have a divine mission. Just like you. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, what is this? Uh, should, you, should, you, should you choose to, to, uh, to, uh, to accept? And, and this will stop this track in four seconds. Something like that, big time thing. And the angels were actually giving this scroll. This is your divine mission. They were excited. Yes, what is it? You can be a servant of those who will inherit salvation. Yes. You know why? Because you are there up in the heaven and they will be part of The Bible said that if you put a voice in the word of God, they will carry it out. That's what a psalm said. In a Proverbs, if you put a voice in the word of God, they will carry it out. But if you voice, put a voice on your problem, somebody else comes around and carry it out. I, I always believe that if... I have I want, it's one thing that really gets me is when somebody comes in the hospital like, Oh, I'll be pain. Please help me. And I'm like, I think that's what we are here for. Or you whining and crying and screaming will not make it easier for me and you. And all your screaming will not make the morphine come faster. <laughs> and if I'm not your nurse, somebody else will give you half of the morphine. <laughs> oh my God, please, for oh Jesus, I'm dying here. No, you're not, because you're talking. But you know, you don't have to know your problem. All you have to do is, what is God saying about this? Then you put the word, the voice of the word, and the angels, because the demons treat you different, the angels treat you different. They're saying, what can I do now to partner with this guy here and to carry the word of God? Because God is saying, I want to make a testimony out of this one. Make sure that whatever he does, 
it will become a trophy, it will become a testimony. And so that when the coming ages, they will look at and say, it is God. It is God who did this. So let me, let me close to this one. In Hebrews, we saw that, that the angels were sent to minister. Uh, we, we are privileged. We can serve God in the temple. The Levites can serve God in the temple every if nobody else can do it. There is a last person in the Bible I would like to look at. It is King David. Saul one time was waiting because the Amalekites came and attacked them. He was waiting for Samuel and Samuel was taking too long to come. And what he did was he offered burnt offering. When Samuel came, he said, what did you do? Why did you act like a priest? Now, you know what you did? You just blew it. Now the kingdom will be taken away from you. But David did the same. He offered to offer sacrifice and God was so pleased. And not just that, he even ate the food of the priest. And one time when he was in Ziklag, the rest of the, the people were kidnapped. He was so upset and everybody was thinking of stoning him. He had to have an answer from God. He grabbed the ephod from the high priest Abiathar and put it on him and said, God, what am I going to do? You shouldn't do that. But he and God said, chase them. And what's the difference here? You know the difference? King Saul was the king decided by man. David was the king decided by God. And when man decides something, it is limited. But when God decides something, it is vast. King Saul eventually lost it. He was into pleasing man. Oh, I did this because I saw the people running away already, so I had to do the offering. Oh, I, I did not kill them all because, uh, you know, they, they kept the cow, they kept this thing and everything. And, 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 and someone said, you know, it's better to obey the sacrifice. Well, David was designed by God. And when it is designed by God, you find better promises, bigger birth to move out. And the honor and the glory, the signs and wonders, everything else is there. It becomes to the point, it comes to the point of being sometimes silly and funny. Because it's easy. Under the new covenant, we have the covenant. The manifestation of the Spirit. Agatheo. God called us to do good things. You know, you can actually give money. And that you don't even need God to, do, to come help you that. You know, unless if, if that zipper is really stuck, you have to pray for it to open. You can give your food. You don't need God for that. You can give to the poor in Africa. You don't need God for that. You can walk the blind in the need for God for that. But you know what you need? It's when somebody's suffering. And you cannot pull out anything for that. It's kind of empty. This is God saying, this is the word for that, Agatha. That meeting is not accidental. And don't water it down with reasoning that's nonsense. Because God said, prepare beforehand. Did you think it was accidental you bumped on somebody who's lame? Because he's lame, that's why I bumped on him. No! It is because the Agatha you prepared beforehand so that he will manifest it and God will say, go ahead, Robert, the angels are watching, the demon's about to go. Do it so I can be a trophy again over there. But some people water it down. Or have a problem with the way about this is the problem is an opportunity for friends. God, I'm missing this. Now let me pray. Let me let me take hold of this. Let me command this to happen. Because you are a priest and a king, you can do this. This is, you know, in conclusion, I, I just built up on what we did last week, last, 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 last week. For the past few weeks, you've seen this God manifesting more signs and wonders. It's coming up. We just had a garbage day yesterday. And the Bible said it. Blessed are pure in heart for they shall see God. You know, sins just went away. We're, we're really in that thing. Pursue, pursue, pursue. It's that acting up in the position where God called you up here as a priest and a king all together and take hold of the very God in you. Do not bother down the word. Where there's an opportunity, if it's being stretched, go for it. Don't be ashamed. If you fall flat in your face, go ahead. Pick yourself up. You think, you know, I was standing here. I was really saying, you know, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. You know, I'm hearing my name a lot. And I said, God, they just don't know how many times I fall flat on my face before that thing. You don't know how many times I fall flat, pray nothing happened, but I press on because I know. I know, I know, and I know that the demons knew I sit over there and the angels are waiting. There's a reason it did not happen, but God, one day, your name will be said a lot. When they pray for me, they pray for me. And you'll say, thank God I endured those embarrassing times. Saul failed because he was afraid of man. 
The Bible says he was a tall, good-looking man. He was uh, one one head above his shoulders. I think that was.